Hello everybody. Okay, in this video, the rabbi will give us a, an overview. He summarizes the, the position of the rabbinic Judaism on the Messiah. And basically the position is that there is a coming man sometime in the future who will uh, bring uh, in this uh, great kingdom of righteousness including the Jews and the lost ten tribes of Israel and they will all live in Israel and rule the world from Israel. So this is uh, um, a very literal interpretation of the Torah um, without any um, consideration for what was spoken of through the prophets after the Torah and there I think there therein is where they stumble uh, people who hold this position so um, and then uh, the, the rabbi will go on in videos to come about other historical references. Uh, we will cover those. He, he goes into some problems with Christian doctrine. So we will look at that also. But today we're looking at the summarization of uh, their position on the Messiah. On the summer. But today we're looking at... Um, their summarization of their position on the Messiah. Number five, the nations of the world are going to turn to Israel for spiritual guidance. The Bible says the whole purpose for God choosing the Jewish people is so that we should be a light unto the nations. The book of Isaiah says one day the world is going to turn to our light. We're told the nations of the world will all come then to a knowledge of God. Every person on the planet is going to come to worship God. And finally, peace will spread throughout the planet. What I just described, I need all your marbles now. What I just described didn't say one word about a Messiah. All it spoke about was a transformed world. None of these passages I just described speak about any special guy. However, there are about 10 passages in the Bible that describe a righteous descendant of King David who will be wise. And he will rule as the king of Israel during this utopian age. So if you want to know what does the Bible speak about the Messiah, he is the special Davidic king who will be wise and righteous and rule Israel when these messianic prophecies take place when the world has been transformed. That person is the Messiah. And one thing is very, very clear now. There is no transformed world. Ipso facto, there's no Messiah. We're still awaiting this person. No one on the planet can say, yes, all this has happened. What does the New Testament say about the role of the Messiah? Listen carefully. It's very obvious that Jesus did not do any of this. It's very obvious Jesus did not do any of this. And what Christianity begins with, if you want to understand the Nikuda, the point at which Christianity begins as a separate religion from Judaism, it begins at the moment that it redefines the entire concept of the Messiah to accommodate a dead Messiah. Again, we know what the Jewish Messiah is. The Bible's clear about it. Jesus didn't do that. So either you have to walk away from Jesus or you have to rehabilitate him by, by, by giving him a new job description. And the new job description has to be one that a dead person does. So look at what the New Testament says about the role of the Messiah. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And she will bring forth a son and you will call his name Jesus. In Hebrew, Yeshua, which means salvation. Why? Because he's going to save his people from their sins. From a Christian point of view, the purpose of the Messiah is not to transform the world on a terrestrial level. It's not all about making peace in the world. It's about making peace with people's hearts and God. No more sins, forgiveness. It's all extraterrestrial. It's up in the Himmel. 
It's in the Himmel, it's in the heavens. Because he didn't do anything in this world. Look at 1 Corinthians. For I delivered to you first what I received, how the Messiah died for our sins, according to the scriptures. According to Christianity, the whole purpose of the Messiah is to die as a sacrifice for sin. That was the main reason Jesus came. Number three, first John chapter one. The next day he saw Jesus coming to him and he said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That's how Christianity sees the Messiah. Someone who takes away our sin burden. There we have a passage in First Peter and in Romans. And he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross. That's what Jesus accomplished. He bore his sins in his body on the cross that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. So what you see here is essentially a redefinition of the messianic concept. First John chapter 2, he himself is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for ours, but for the whole world. So here we see two very different two different views of what the Messiah is. According to the Jewish Bible, the Messiah is an earthly king who presides over a utopian world, a transformed world in this world. And in the Christian model, the Messiah is basically a spiritual being who dies to take on the sins of the world. That's the job. Very different job altogether. Um, now, I thought this was a good time to go over the Song of Moses, uh, which is um, it's another thing presented in the scripture that is quite interesting. Um, Moses, when he would, knew he was going to die, he wrote a song for Israel to sing to remember that they would not forget what he taught them. So we'll look at this. And, and Yeshua, the son of Nun, uh, what English would call Joshua, took over from Moses as the leader. So this is another interesting um, parallelism that we find in the Bible uh, that Moses gives the law to the people of Israel, but he does not enter the promised land because of lack of faith. He had one instant, one small instant of lack of faith, and because of that, he does not enter the promised land. But Yeshua leads the people into the promised land to conquer it. So Yeshua, that's the same name as Jesus. So there's another interesting parallel in the Bible. is the one who actually leads the children of Israel into the promised land is Yeshua, not Moses. Uh, so let's take a look at the Song of Moses. It's, you'll find it in Deuteronomy chapter 32. And I'm going to begin with the last verse in chapter 31. And Moses spoke in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. Give ear, O you heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop, drop as the rain, my speech shall distew. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass, because I will publish the name of the Lord. Ascribe you greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His word. <clears throat> he is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. 
Do you thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that has bought thee? Has he not made thee and established thee? Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask your father, and he will show thee, thy elders, and they will tell thee, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, when he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people, Jacob, is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land, and in the waste howling wilderness he led him about, he instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirs up her nest, flutters over her young, spreads abroad her wings, takes them, bears them on her wings, so the Lord alone did lead them, and there was no strange God with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields, and he made him to suck honey out of the rock, and oil out of the flinty rock, butter of kine, and milk of sheep, with fat of lambs, and rams of the breed of Bashan, and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat, and thou did drink the pure blood of the grape. But Jeshurun, Jeshurun is another name for Israel. Um, I think Israel in rebellion. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations pr provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begot thee thou art unmindful, and has forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them, because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them, I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God, and they have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy, which those which are not and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. For a fire is kindled in my anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will hit, heap mischiefs upon them, and I will spend my arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger, and devoured with burning heat, and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them, with the poison of serpents of the dust. <clears throat> the sword without, and terror within. I shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also, and the man of gray hair. I said I would scatter them into the corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men, were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy. Lest their adversaries 
should behave themselves strangely, or lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord has not done all this. For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. How should one chase a thousand, and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up? For their rock is not as our rock even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is the vine of Sodom, and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are the grapes of Gaul. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons, and the cruel venom of asps. Is not this laid up in store with me, and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongs vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he sees that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices, and drank the wine of their drink offerings? Let them rise up and help you, and be your protection. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no god with me. I kill, I make alive, I wound, I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. And if I wet my glittering sword and my hand takes hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to my enemies and I will reward them that hate me. I will make my arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives, from the beginning of the revenges upon the enemy. Rejoice, O you nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants, and will render vengeance to his adversaries, and, and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. And Moses came and spoke all the words of this song in the ears of the people, he and Yeshua, the son of Nun. So that's quite long, and it shows um, it's, he's prophesying Israel's rejection of God and their uh, punishment, and um, also... There is, uh, you know, there's a lot there about um, Judgment Day and all that stuff. So that's the Song of Moses. And uh, now the next thing we want to take a look at, that, that's our foundation of this study. The next thing we want to take a look at is Isaiah chapter 42. Where is it? Isaiah 42. Isaiah. Isaiah 42. Um, we'll just read the whole chapter, okay? This is a prophecy of Isaiah. Let's see. Behold, my servant who I uphold. My elect, in whom my soul delights, I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth... <clears throat> Just a sec. <clears throat> okay. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. 
He shall not cry out, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed he shall not break, and the smoking flax he shall not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged, till he has set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for his law. Oh, well, that's interesting. His law. Thus says God the Lord, He that created the heavens and stretched them out, He that spread forth the earth and that which comes out of it, He that gives breath unto people upon it and spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord God, have called thee in righteousness, and I will hold your hand, and I will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, and to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing unto the Lord a new song. So what was the old song? The song of Moses. Okay. So now he's saying sing a new song. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise from the end of the earth. Oh, now... See, the Song of Moses, it was focused on Israel and on all uh, God being uh, his inheritance is the land of Israel. Now, this song is about going to the end of the earth. And we know the earth is a round ball, so there is no end. It means the entire earth. Okay, you that go down to the sea, and all that is therein, the isles and the inhabitants thereof, let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up, lift up their voice, the villages that Kedar does inhabit, let the inhabitants of the rock sing, let them shout from the top of the mountains, let them give glory unto the Lord, and declare his praise in the islands. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yeah, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. I have long time holding my peace. I have been still and refrained myself now I will cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up their herbs. And I will make the rivers islands and I will dry up the pools. And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them, and crooked things straight. These things I will do to them, and not forsake them. They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed that trust in graven images to say to the molten images, you are our gods. Hear, you deaf, and look, you blind, that you may see. 
Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect, and blind as the Lord's servant? Seeing many things, but thou observes not, opening the ears, but he hears not. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness' sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. So there's this new law. It's a, it's a magnified version of the law of Moses. It's magnified. It's made honorable. So there's this new song and this magnified law. Okay? That the Lord will come like a mighty man. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are a prey, and none delivers for a spoil, and none says restore. This has got to do with the idolatry, the, the, the uh, Greco-Roman mythology that... Um, was mixed with Christianity. I don't know. Something like that. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned? For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. Therefore he has poured upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle, and it has set him on fire round about, yet he knew not, and it burned him, yet he laid it not to heart. See, so who in the future in our time will, will give ear to this, to say, well, what, God, what did God do to ancient Israel? when they served idols, and when they wouldn't listen to God's words, what did he do to them? And it wasn't pretty. And now, here, Christians today, I don't know, um, not all Christians, but there's a lot of them that uh, are doing the exact same thing ancient Israel did. And they're even calling themselves the rock. God, they're not the rock. God is a rock. So, um, you know, that's worth thinking about. It really is. So now, there's the, the, the new song and the new law from this Redeemer. Okay? Now, if we go uh, ahead to Revelation chapter 5. Verse 9, uh, okay, you start in verse 8. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four twenty elders down, fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints, and they sung a new song. So here's a new song, okay? Thou art worthy to take the book. They're singing this to the Lamb, the Lamb of God, okay? Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou was slain and has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made unto and has made us unto our god kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth so there's a uh, the new song sung in heaven uh the song of the lamb 
Okay, and then uh, Revelation chapter 14. Verse 3. Okay, starting in verse 2. And I heard a voice in heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harps harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty-four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb wherever he goes. These were redeemed from among men, being the firstfruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. So there's another uh, thing about the new song. And Revelation 15, 3. Okay, and then uh, we'll just start Revelation 15, 1. And I saw another sign in heaven great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. So this is like the beginning of judgment happening. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand upon the sea of glass having the harps of God so it's going the same back to the harps and they sing the song of Moses the servant of God and the song of the Lamb saying great and marvelous are thy works Lord God Almighty just and true are thy ways thou King of Saints so there's God, the King. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you are holy, for all nations shall come and worship before you. So there's all nations, not just the little land of Israel. This is all nations and the whole earth. For your judgments are made manifest. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. So, this is, uh, you know, the difference between the um, rabbinic Jewish view of the Tanakh and the Old Testament and the Christian view, and even the view of the prophets in the Tanakh, because the prophet Isaiah is talking about a new law and a new song from the righteous servant. And what, what the rabbinic uh, Judaism misses, the point that they, they stumble over, is that they're saying, well, you know, Jesus didn't come and start this great new kingdom on earth yet. So since he didn't do that, and he didn't fulfill the prophecies about the Messiah. That's their main point. And, but Jesus, when he came, he said, my kingdom is not of this world. So He's saying, my kingdom is a little bit different than what you are expecting. And he initiated his kingdom. That, that um, time when he was on earth and crucified and resurrected, that was his inauguration as king. And now he's gone to receive his kingdom 
and and from God in heaven and then he's coming back to take his kingdom and when he takes his kingdom it's going to be a time of judgment so um, you know you you will find all that in the Tanakh and I, th I think that's where we're going next we're going to see that um, the Tanakh actually supports that view also and that um, there's this whole idea of the uh, the Jews being blinded and and not seeing um, all these extra things and because and they're blinded by their own view of the Tanakh and they're not following the lamb wherever he goes they're just stuck on Moses so um, and there's there's like a safety in Moses and and there's this idea that okay we just stick with Moses and stick with the Torah all these other things that seem confusing don't matter because we're sticking with what we were told in the first place. That's the, the, the mindset behind that. And, um, you know, I'm not so sure of uh, where that ends as far as God is concerned. Um, you know, every man is judged according to his works personally. So that's between them and God. But we are discussing what does the Bible actually say? What does the Tanakh actually say? And when you look at the prophets, there are new things. There are new things. And these are the things that we're discussing. Now, the problem that I'm having with the rabbinic Judaism is they refuse to look at any, at these new things. They they kind of skip over Isaiah uh, and, and anything that talks in that manner, and they don't address it. So, um, you know, we do. So that's where um, I'm hoping that uh, Christians who are being stumbled by these rabbis, the way they're talking, that you can understand that you know there is more to it than what they are saying and uh, we'll get into um, he's going to go into some detail next about um, Christian teachings so we'll go through that with them too and see how that, that goes so we'll see you um, next week and uh, May your week be blessed, and um, I'm not going to bother editing this much. I'm, I'm, uh, I have a lot going on right now, and I really don't have time to spend a lot of time on these videos, but I, I do the videos. So I'm not going to edit it. I'll just put it out there, and hopefully, uh, you know, things will come out of it that are good. I trust. So... We'll see you next week. Thank you.